Hello and welcome to this, the first of a series of discussions we're going to have with experts from the American Cancer Society's uh, de various departments in the Office of the Chief Medical Officer, the science and medical experts who uh, work on some of the problems that we deal with here at the American Cancer Society. This is our first uh, presentation and joining me is Dr. Otis Brawley, our Chief Medical Officer. And our topic today is going to be prostate cancer, uh, clearly an issue that's uh, pertinent and current uh, on the minds of people. Tell us a little bit, uh, how serious a problem is prostate cancer for men in this country? Well, mm -hmm. Len, prostate cancer is a very serious problem. It's the most commonly diagnosed cancer among men, second leading cause of cancer death among men. So it's a serious problem. It's especially a serious problem in the African American community where black men have a risk of prostate cancer which is higher than whites and a death rate that's nearly twice that of whites. You are someone who's been very interested in the issues surrounding prostate cancer for a long time. You're not uh, new to this particular question. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, whether or not we can really, you know, well, can we prevent prostate cancer? Can we save lives from prostate cancer with early detection? Well, in terms of prevention, there's some interesting and uh, uh, very gratifying work that's been done with drugs finasteride and dutasteride. They're 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. They're pills. And uh, it appears that men taking those pills can decrease their risk of getting prostate cancer by about 25 percent over the period of time that they take the pills. Long term, we don't know what the effects will be, but certainly over a five or ten year period of time, a man can decrease his risk of getting prostate cancer. Now, having said that, those drugs are not yet FDA approved for prevention of prostate cancer, so I can't really recommend that a man take something that's not FDA approved. Let's talk about saving lives from prostate cancer. Simply stated, does the PSA test work? The PSA test, uh, which was developed over 25 years ago, unfortunately, we still don't know if it saves lives. There are some studies which have been criticized that suggest that it does. There are some studies that have been criticized that suggest that it doesn't. Uh, the truth is, we just don't know. What we do know is there are some risks associated with screening. There are people who, who have cancer and the cancer will be missed. There are some people who have uh, an elevated PSA and will be diagnosed with cancers that actually will never kill and uh, will be treated needlessly. We actually cure people who don't need to be cured uh, when it comes to prostate cancer. The question is, do we cure people who need to be cured? Uh, it is a complicated issue. The best I can tell you is the American Urologic Association, the European Euro Urologic Association, and the American Cancer Society have all said that screening should only be done among men who understand the, comp the complexities of this, who understand that there are definite proven harms, there are possible benefits. For some men, that means that they should get screened because they're very concerned about prostate cancer. For other men, that means that perhaps they shouldn't. You know, I'm very concerned there's a lot of publicity out there, some of it by people who want to make money by recruiting patients, uh, that oversimplifies this, that says that prostate cancer screening clearly saves lives. That is a lie. We don't know for sure. Uh, and we get very emotional about telling patients the truth. And we see a lot of people out there who are currently not telling people the truth. The truth is, if you're concerned about prostate cancer, understand there are proven risks and possible benefits. You should get screened if you want to. If you're less concerned about prostate cancer, understanding that there are proven risks and possible benefits, maybe getting screened is not the right answer. Every man needs to decide for himself. So what you're suggesting, what you're saying, what the American Cancer Society says is that men should be educated, informed, and make a decision what to do not just roll up their sleeves and get a blood test. Exactly. And these decisions really ought to be made within the physician-patient relationship. We're very concerned about a number of uh, clinics that are offering mass screening where informed decision-making, where man, 
where man gets told the truth about screening and is without pressure allowed to make a decision, that's not happening. Many of these free screening things, by the way, are designed more to get patients for hospitals and clinics and doctors than they are to benefit the patients. That's another issue. That's a huge ethical issue that needs to be addressed. Uh, again, I must stress, we're not against prostate cancer screening. We're against a man being duped and deceived into getting prostate cancer screening. Any man who has a conversation with his doctor and decides after learning the potential risks and the potential benefits of screening, any man who wants to get screened should get screened. And we believe insurance should pay for that screening. But any man who learning those risks and possible benefits decides not to get screened, he shouldn't be criticized. Well, that's all very important information, and I want to thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm Dr. Len Lichtenfeld with Dr. Otis Brawley. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again.